Hi everyone, I'm with my friend Jennifer Abel and we actually know each other from high school. She is half Latina, half Filipina. And so Jennifer, do you mind telling us a little bit about yourself? My name is Jennifer. Dad was born in the Philippines. My mom was born in Honduras. She's also part Turkish. They met up in Chicago and currently just finished my second year of med school in Alabama. What brought your parents to Chicago or to the US? So my dad ended up coming because his mom was here, her stepdaughter had came to Chicago. So it was just a matter of like following your family. And he came here pretty young, I think around high school. And with my mom in Honduras, she really wanted to go to university, but she was dirt poor. Her dad had lost their business on her last year and they didn't have the money for her to graduate. Two of her siblings were in America, not in Chicago at the time. They were just like, let's go. You know, she just kind of packed up her things and walked essentially to America from Honduras. Apparently they got rejected twice at the Mexican border and got returned back her brother was like let's go to Chicago I mean it took like not being able to go to university but she had the American dream for her education was like such a huge thing so she always like told me you know, go to school like, you don't need to get married don't need to have kids like, go to school travel I think it's amazing that your mom pushed you to be like independent it sounds yeah. like I don't know about how darn culture but I know that Hispanic culture in general like has the machismo it is very okay. like male dominated yeah. I think it's like so different that your mom is like don't have kids like don't have that traditional family, follow your dreams, your career, travel, live for yourself. My mom has always been like very accepting and very independent and she kind of raised me that way as well. I think it's also because of the fact that my dad is just very easygoing. Now that you've had experience living away from Chicago and Alabama in a smaller city, how have you understood your upbringing in Chicago in terms of the fact that we were able to go to such a diverse school and the city itself is diverse? When I first moved to Dothan, it was a huge culture shock. I cried, I think, for a week. I still don't feel like I fully adjusted and I didn't realize how fully privileged I was. Because like you said, in Chicago, you have so many friends of like various different cultures and you hang out at their houses all the time. You get to meet their parents, you try their food, you learn about their language or like what they like. Don't really get that in Alabama. It's kind of a surface level thing. If I want Japanese food, there's a Japanese restaurant, but you're not really meeting Japanese people. There's like no Filipino community in Dothan either. It's very hard trying to connect there and I just realized how blessed I was living in such a big city being exposed to so many different people. When people see you do they know that you're Hispanic? Do they know that you're Asian? What has been their reaction to you? I feel like it kind of varies like sometimes they'll start speaking to me in Spanish they know I'm part Hispanic everyone always assumes something. I feel like I'm getting more and more mixes as I grow up. Some people like can tell I'm Asian from like my eyes. It, it kind of varies what people like perceive me as and when I go to like Filipino restaurants they're like oh Filipina like are you mixed with white you know because I feel like that's always the default with like mixed people it's like white and some sort of minority you don't really see a lot of double minorities but most of the time Asians probably the last of the list I feel like the hair they're like Puerto Rican and something how did you take it growing up because I'm sure you got that you know when you were with your mom and your dad did people have different understandings or misunderstandings when you were with both of your parents one parent oh yeah I remember one time when I was in elementary school we just for reference so my mom is Hispanic but she's very white passing. She like had naturally blonde hair growing up. She dyes it dark, like hazel eyes. My dad is very dark and people don't really think of him as a Filipino when they first see him. They think he's Mexican. I remember one time I was getting off the bus in elementary middle school. I lived right in front of the elementary school and I see my dad gardening and I like jump off the bus and like I go to my dad. I'm like, hey dad, that is such a good field trip. And I remember my teacher at the time was like, Jennifer, Jennifer, who are you talking to? Like stop talking to strangers. And I was just like, this is my dad. Awkward moment for the teacher. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Hispanics on my mom's side are always like, you look more Asian than you do Hispanic. So like, I feel like I never kind of looked like either or. And so how do you identify yourself? I identify myself as both, but like leaning towards Hispanic because I feel like that's kind of the culture that I understand more of. My mom speaks to me in Spanish. I know more about the culture. I think it's also because I look more Hispanic. I remember in high school, I almost felt like I had a lot of Asian
Asian friends, but I was never like, part of like the inner circle because I just didn't look Asian. My main group of friends in high school were predominantly Hispanic plus Alex, who's white. Those were like the friends that I would hang out with outside of school all the time. With the Asian friends, I feel like it was predominantly within the school. In college, when I joined my hip hop dance group, I actually made like a lot of Asian friends that like I connected with on a deep level that I still talk to now. One of my best friends that I actually connected with, she is half Indian, half Ecuadorian, and even in Northside, I feel like the only double minority I knew was Chow J. I feel like I knew a lot of half Asian, half white half people. White. Like, and yeah. especially in Asia, it's the half white, half Asians that are in the media and put on a pedestal, given recognition, mm -hmm. or they're the ideal beauty standard. And I felt colorism on both sides. As a Hispanic, I am too dark, but as a Filipino, I am light enough to be considered beautiful. And I remember when I was younger, I went to Disney World and it was 110 degrees at the time and I was wearing a black like long sleeve sweatshirt and I had the hood up and I was like it's because I can't get tan like I can't get tan like I have to be as light as possible you know I dyed my hair blonde like through college as well because I was like I want to be perceived as lighter you know in the Philippines those that are viewed as like on top are like mixed with white and like my grandma will always say you know your grandpa is from Spain he's part white he had colored eyes essentially like we're better than Filipinos that are pure I kind of got that a lot growing up even my cousins that I met in Canada they'll like show me off to like other people and they're like look this is my Filipino cousin she's mixed with white she said this like multiple times and I'm like no I'm not mixed with white like just because I am mixed doesn't make me beautiful or like better than anyone else that's here this misconception that you have to be mixed to be beautiful or you have to be light to be beautiful so my sister has more western features but she has darker skin and I remember one time we were hanging out on my Filipino side of the family and my aunt approached her mind you like this is for my grandma's second marriage sure and she was maybe under 10 at this point and she was like you're not beautiful because you're dark wow. and it, it didn't matter like that she had like a higher bridge nose or whatever it's like the biggest thing is like the skin color, skin color you know i've talked to a couple of my filipino friends growing up and they're always like i wish i was like mixed with something i wish i was like mixed with white i'm like why is it so special but it's so hard to tear down hundreds of years of colonialism and just say like you know you're beautiful like accept that because it's like easy to like say that and it's so hard to tear down these beauty standards but like i'm glad in the philippines like it's starting to slowly happen everyone is like seeing a filipino they don't really know much about the culture everyone like wants a korean boyfriend or they want like a japanese girlfriend and i remember i was having a really big identity crisis in high school where it's like i was starting to like being asian but it was like not the right asian because like there's that stigma with southeast asians you know the jungle asians and i was like yeah. this isn't the kind of asian that i want to be i want to look like a k-pop idol or i definitely felt that tear between myself it was really hard like accepting myself growing up i think it didn't take until college where i was like you know what i've accepted both both sides of myself and I love both sides of myself. Even with like our parents and how they've internalized their identity once they've moved to the States, I think that also has a ripple effect on us. My dad didn't really talk about Filipino culture growing up. They cooked the food, but got it mostly from my grandma. And again, my grandma has a like colonialism mindset where it's be as white as possible. On my mom's side, they always valued whiteness as well in the Hispanic culture. I remember growing up, my mom's side of the family would be like, oh, you're so dark for your mom's side of the family. And I I remember it was just, just this craving to be as like white and European as possible. My mom was very proud to be Honduran, but she came here so young and they wanted me to be as Americanized as possible. They gave me a very white name, Jennifer Michelle Abel. Actually, funny story about the last name of Abel. It used to be Aventura, but apparently during like some war in the Philippines, it got changed to Abel, which is like a Jewish name. I didn't learn Tagalog from my grandma because she didn't want me to have an accent. My mom wanted me to look as white as possible. She was always like, dye your hair blonder. You like look whiter that way. And, like, like, while I'm proud to be both and I was kind of exposed to both, the goal I feel like was always to be as American as possible because that's what was going to be accepted. When you see white people on TV all the time and that's all you're exposed to, you're like, why am I not the default? Why don't I look like that at all? And I remember when I saw the trailer for Ray and the Last Dragon, I freaking bawled. This is what I wanted to see growing up. I wish I had that one, <laughs> you know? And like now they're like coming up with a Filipino anime called Trissi. These kids like grow up with so much representation. Like, they can have so much more self-love. Unpacking the racism and and the mindsets, like the colorism in that was a lot to do, but like you did in college, that's when I really was like, okay, let's take all these things that I've been told and let's challenge them. Even when I tan now, like there's always like that voice in the back of my mind where it's like, am I pretty as like a Filipino or like a Hispanic now because I'm darker. Even when you grow up and you try to outgrow those ideals, I feel like they're still always at the back of my mind. You've been growing up with them for like over a decade. It's like so hard again to break down that. I guess trying to understand our identity through being Asian American is also its own experience. I remember growing 
up, somebody was like, you're pretty for an Asian, but you're not for Hispanic. So they're very different beauty standards and like in each culture. One of the things that comes with being mixed is that, you know, one side might accept you and the other doesn't, or like neither side accepts you. And you just yeah. are kind of in the middle and you can only yeah. relate to other people who have multi-ethnic, multicultural backgrounds because of the same feeling. I used to be teased by my Hispanic cousins when I was younger, because they were like, your like nose is so big. Why don't you have like a bridge? And they would just laugh about my eyes and they would call me Chinita, which like is Chinese in Spanish. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, the Chinita, the Chinita. And I remember on my Filipino side, I wasn't really close to them because again, the ones that are in Chicago from my grandma's second marriage, while they like wanted to be mixed with like Spanish blood or then comes my mom, like Hispanic woman that they were just like, oh, she's just trying to get married to her dad for like papers or whatever. So I remember I was just like kind of resentful towards both sides, like growing up. Getting into your parents' relationship, you said that they met in Chicago. Do you mind going into that a little bit more? So they met in Chicago because my dad was in like a biker gang. My mom's older sister at the time, they lived in Pilsen, was dating my dad's friend. So like they were all hanging out one time and my dad like saw my mom and he was like, oh, I like her. She didn't speak a lick of English. She had just came from Honduras and she didn't know what was going on, but he asked her out on a date. They were hanging out and like he had a little dictionary where he was just like, hola. Um, <laughs> and then my mom was like, he would just flip furiously through the pages, like trying to say <laughs> Trying to find the next follow-up <laughs> he ended up learning Spanish, so like now he like understands it perfectly. That's an awesome way to be introduced to another culture is through the need of like wanting to communicate with someone. And back then, of course, it was harder because you might be able to say something to them, but once they respond, it's like, do you even understand <laughs> it? I don't know how they did it, but like my grandma, my Filipino grandma ended up learning Spanish too through it. Now she'll like talk to my mom in like broken Spanish. And I'm like, Lola, she speaks English. <laughs> my dad speaks in like Spanglish to my mom and she just speaks in Spanish. My mom can speak English, but she just chooses to like speak in Spanish. I understand Spanish perfectly. I wouldn't say it's like broken Spanish. Like I'll just kind of like speak Spanglish. I feel like that's the case with most children of immigrants, you know, they kind of speak whatever a language. Of the two languages. Yeah, a picture of the two languages. I think you said that like in high school was when you kind of embraced being Asian and then in college a little bit more. Is that kind of the process? Yeah, so like it was in high school, but it was the infatuation, I suppose, with like East Asians essentially in like their Culture. It wasn't until college where I joined my like hip hop dance group that you're like meeting Asians from everywhere, like international Asians. And I was just like growing to love who I was in general. I was growing to love my skin color while I still had like the blonde hair and like I was still kind of going through that, you know, it was like a slow process. I didn't want to be viewed as like half white anymore. Like, and I still wanted that in high school. So I wanted to be viewed as like half white, half Asian in high school. Yeah. I feel like I kind of neglected both sides at like different <laughs> at one point or the other. At, like, one point or the other. <laughs> and now I'm just like, I love being both. Again, I had my friend Marlene Lenthing in college, who's half Indian, half Ecuadorian. Like I had her, I saw myself in her as well. And like just seeing somebody that is like you and like that has had similar experiences. We would stay up till three in the morning a lot in undergrad and just kind of talk about being mixed. Just having somebody like that, I think made it significantly easier. In high school, all I knew was Chow Jay. And like I was close to Chow Jay, but like it was really hard getting to a point to love myself. And speaking of which, I just kind of remembered something from high school. I remember when I got into Northwestern, somebody had said, oh, you only got into Northwestern because you put Hispanic on the application. This was one of my Asian friends. I always had like kind of this tear between both of them again, where I wasn't like one or the other. And it wasn't until college where I like felt fully accepted by both sides. Growing up, how did your parents introduce you to their culture? I know in high school you were really involved. And so do you mind talking about that? First off, growing up, my grandma used to go to these annual parties. They would raise money here in Chicago and give it to their communities back in the Philippines. So it was like this big kind of like a ball that happened every year. So I went to that and I was exposed to the way that we dress and like our cultural like dances. And on my Hispanic side, I think because my mom came here very, very young, she also kind of lost a bit of her Honduran culture. While I identified as Latina, like it wasn't really like Honduran culture. It was just kind of a mixture of the things that she grew up with in, in Chicago, living in Pilsen with a bunch of Mexicans. In Northside, I think we had I Night. I Night being international night. It's like a showcase of like different dances or like performances from around the world. So I actually got into Korean drumming for my friend Jessica Fan. And then one of my friends who had known for a decade at that point, her name is Shelly Simon. She was going to be the leader of the Indian dance team at Northside. And she's like, can you please join? Like we need more people. And I was like, yeah, sure. Like why not? And then I did hip hop with Hypnotic in high school as well. In college, I actually joined a competing Bollywood dance team. We actually won nationals my freshman oh. year. 
Yes. You know? Being multiracial yourself, you have this interest in learning about other people's cultures. And it's not just the entry level of just like liking the food and watching the shows, but it's like actually being involved in the performances. You know, even with Korean drumming and like learning about the culture, I didn't want to be viewed as like a Korea boo, essentially. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I don't want to be, be viewed as somebody that just like the K-pop and the K-drama. Like, I just want to know more about their culture in general. So it's not a sort of like surface level thing. It's great that people have tried different types of Asian food or interested in visiting the culture based on anime or shows that they've watched. But I do think like to actually be actively involved through a cultural tradition, that's like a different experience too. Yeah, for sure. Because I feel like when you don't, you kind of have this grandiose image of what it's going to be like. I've seen this with a lot of like my non-Asian friends. They kind of have this like image of what the like, country is going to be like or what the women are going to be like. And I'm like, you guys have to dig deeper than just anime and K-pop. There's a lot more to like culture than just that. As the years have gone by, I feel like America is so much more open to like understanding a lot more cultures. Like you'll hear reggaeton like on the radio all the time. Like you hear K-pop so much more often. So many more people are getting into anime in general than there were back when I was in high school. Everything's becoming a lot more popularized and normalized. It's great seeing that. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like if it's even getting to communities where there's not really Asian people around, like that's how you know that yeah. the pop culture has really like permeated American pop culture. No, I see that in Dothan. Too. The only Asians I see in Dothan are either in Asian restaurants or like students at my school. There's such a love of Asian culture in Dothan, like with the young people. Like I've seen people cosplaying. Apparently they have an anime convention there. Do you ever wonder if people just kind of like the surface level thing? Like they like the things that are popular. On social media, these people that used to DM me whenever I posted things about anime, they'd always be like, I love that anime, like blah, 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 blah. And I'd have so many like conversations with these people. I would never see any posts on their story about what was going on in the world with like the Asian hate stuff. And I'm just like, why does it stop there? Like you're so quick to have these conversations with me if it's like something, you know, superficial. And I feel like that's something that other people of color have complained about too, especially like the black culture where people will appropriate them, will mm -hmm. listen to the music and talk about the food and use the slang. But then when it comes to like black people being killed or black people being discriminated against, not having that interest that is there when it's about the culture, when it's about fashion, like all the things that Black Americans have brought to the table. But then when it comes to actually the real issues of life and death and danger, it's silent. Like, I don't know what it is, but it is problematic. And I feel like it's true for a lot of minorities or communities of color when it comes to the issues that affect the community. But I do hope that it just takes time. When I was younger, I feel like I judged other Asians for how Asian they were. So they were a banana, not Asian enough. You know, Asian on the outside, but white on the inside. Yeah, I used to judge like hard for as well. Or if they were fob, like fresh off the boat or fresh off the plane. Now I'm just like, I need to throw that out, you know, those assumptions out because everyone mm -hmm. has their own story and their own reason as to like why they are the way they are and they've made the choices they've made. I feel like that's a very American Asian thing to do to like judge both sides of the aspect. They're like, they're too fobby and like, they're like too white. Like there has to be like this intermediate. Now that I've had time to understand my identity and as I've understood my identity, I think I've been more understanding of other people's journey. Oh yeah. But I'm just like that was so silly of me you know because like in my own insecurity about my identity I was judging other people because there's no standard for like what an Asian is like, there's so many different facets and so many different life stories of this people like everyone and at Northwestern I feel like there were again we talked about the three kinds of Asians I feel like they were all very separate and you didn't really like mix within it the international students that like talked to the American Asians were the ones that grew up in international schools so were more like Americanized or like they had British teachers or whatever so like those That's are the ones you would talk to then you had like your Asian like girls and sororities like you never like spoke to them because they were like always with white friends and then you had super like Fabi like and they were like always in their circle it's just so weird how never really talk and mix in general with these like groups you know? and like even dating like I know a lot of my friends would be like oh no they're like too whitewashed or like they're too Fabi for me people wanted like that intermediate of like Asian American there's still a wide spectrum to that right like those yeah. who grew up in the suburbs were mostly around white people those who grew up in ethnic Asian enclaves those who grew mm -hmm. up in the inner city or just around other minorities. I always felt like people were like, Filipino culture is like basically the same thing as Latino culture, but it didn't feel like that growing up to me. Like while like, you know, there were some similarities, they always felt like very different spaces to navigate. What I was comfortable with, like with Hispanics, like I wasn't comfortable with Filipinos. My Filipino
Filipino family was a lot more quiet in general. So like I couldn't be like this like loud, rambunctious person. It was like a very different environment from like my Hispanic side. Like I remember growing up, we played reggaeton. Like my mom was like out there twerking on the dance floor. Like to, like, <laughs> I like, love like, it. You know, like there were like very different things like between both cultures growing up. And I was like, it's not exactly the same. Nowadays, I was talking to my cousins in Honduras and they were just like, we love that K-pop group BTS. Can you send us some of their merch? And I'm like, in Honduras? I used to be teased like mercilessly by my Hispanic cousins for like loving K-pop and stuff like that. And like nowadays, I just love how culturally mixed everything is. I know that you talked about your frustrations with maybe people who like are into anime or like Asian popular culture, but not necessarily into Asian issues. What would you like to see more of? Yeah, so what I've been doing with like my roommate, her and her like her sister have like been getting into Asian culture. And I'm always just like, what not to say in front of an Asian sort of thing, like a little like tip book. I'm like, okay, you don't just randomly say like Korean or Japanese phrases to people. You know, this is just anime. Like this is not real life explaining that to them. It's like, I have no problems with this being a stepping stone. Like I love it. I love showing people like anime and K-pop and things that I love. I love talking to them about it, but it's always just kind of like checking them every once in, in a while and just being yeah. like, I'm literally always talking to my roommate about like Asian issues and especially with the whole Asian hate thing going on. I was just like, listen, like this is an issue. Like we have to talk about it. And she started posting things about it and like learning about it and having conversations with me about it. And I've started to talk to her about just race in general. So that sort of thing that I want to see more of. Like, I just don't want to see this like superficial, like this is it. Like, you know, just anime and K-pop. It's like, there is more to us than that, that I want you guys to like learn and understand. And I think it's by having conversations with these people. As I become more comfortable with myself, I've been more comfortable informing other people. I feel like we don't really talk about Asian people and like Asian issues in general much. I think this is perpetuated also by like the model minority myth, like Asians have it all, like everything is fine with Asians. And it's like, we kind of dismiss the difficulties that we face because of it. I feel like a lot of the times, like if something was slightly racist, like said by like a friend or like a significant other, I would just kind of laugh it off because I felt uncomfortable. Addressing the person. Yeah, I felt like yeah. uncomfortable addressing it. And it's like, no, like if you keep on letting those things slide, when is that person ever gonna learn? When are they ever going to appreciate more about the culture if they're just kind of poking fun at it? People have to be open to listening. And when you have a relationship with them, I think that's like a good starting point. Cause it's what you say and what you don't say to people that allows them to establish their boundaries with you. So if we don't correct people, then they're gonna continue to do this with us. And maybe they might think it's okay to do it with other Asians. It is important to let them know a better way to ask a question or a better way to say what they want to say. And I feel like when I never had those conversations before, I always feel like I avoided them because I thought I would get angry. Just shout at them and like why they can't say these things or just be mad that they didn't understand from the beginning why like something wasn't okay. After the conversation, I feel like significantly better. My roommate who's from Indiana, very white. Whenever I'm introducing her to different cultures or different Asian cultures in general, and then I see her like introducing her sister. And I'm just like, this is amazing. And you guys are having conversations with each other like outside of just to me. It's that's a ripple effect yeah, of like sure. you introduce your roommate and then she's introducing her sister who might be introducing it to someone else. I feel like a lot of the times people don't want to have conversations because they're like, they should just understand. And I can understand how it is tiring, like constantly like trying to explain to people like, to like teach about your culture. But I feel like it's kind of important because then otherwise you're kind of just closing yourself off. There's like a higher percentage of people believing that there's actually Asian Americans in higher leadership, upper management mm -hmm. than there are actually Asians in those positions. So like you said, it goes back to the idea of people viewing Asians as being better off, but even amongst Asians, there's such a disparity between some of like the highest earners, most educated versus those who have issues that other minorities and people of color have with school dropouts, unemployment, mm -hmm. and being involved in crime. I feel like when we group the whole Asian continent together as, oh, they're all successful, we, we're ignoring all the differences. You know, I feel like people always clump us together as just Asians and like that's the label. But like when you're looking into it, like so many Southeast Asians are living below the poverty line and we don't talk about that at all. We're just like Asians are rich, like Asians have this and this and that. And it's like to clump us up is dangerous. There's so many disparities within the group that we have yet to address because we're seeing the stereotype. Thank you so much, Jennifer, for having this conversation with me about your background, about issues that you find important within the Asian American community. Thank you so much for having me. Like, I'm so excited that you reached out. Like, I'm so glad I got to share my story. So thank you so much. Bye. Bye.